No, no, I didn't get on. I tell you, I couldn't. Oh, dear you. I knew you weren't feeling right the minute I saw you in the station, and I said to my... What my... station? Why, Grand Central, of course. That's right. They got on together. I saw them. But that's not true. I, I was home There's last a doctor night. Two cars, get them. I all right, folks. All right, all right. Now, I come don't back want to see it, Doctor. I I went to sleep last night in my own house. How many sleeping pills did you take? Sleeping? I never take sleeping pills. Never? No, I, I usually have some hot chocolate at bedtime. Is she going to be all right, Doctor? Well, I do hate to see anybody ailing. Give her two of these. They'll quiet her nerves. Bromide. I'll get some water. You'll feel more relaxed after you take those. Have the conductor call me if you need me again. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Doctor. Good night. Good night. Trying to get some rest. Maybe she gets some. What was it? Just a nightmare? Maybe. It's out of my line. I'm a skin man myself. And you know, I always say the nicest thing about going places is meeting people. My only trouble is I just never go any place. I stay at home. Tell Dick. What's that? When he wakes up when he finds I'm gone. What will he think? What will who think? Oh, my husband. Oh, you want your bag, dearie? That's a pretty bag, isn't it? A.C. Huh, Allison Cortland. Oh, it's a pretty name. Listen, my husband doesn't know I'm gone. He doesn't. I said goodnight to him last night. I, I, I was in my own room when I fell asleep. Oh, I'm sure of that. I'm well, absolutely sure. Oh, look, my dearie. You're carrying a gun, aren't you? Well, that's real smart. I always say a woman has to protect herself these days. <laughs> you live in New York, don't you? That's where I live, New York. New York City. Uptown? Downtown? Sutton Place. Trouble? Tell my inspection. Mac? Yeah? Sergeant, you'd never ask that question if you knew Mrs. Cortland. She'd never leave like this without... I ask a lot of questions in my line of work, Mr. Cortland. I get a lot of answers. You can go now, Mac. I'll be along in a few minutes. Give missing persons the routine dope and tell them I'll call them later. Shall we go upstairs, Sergeant? May I help? Thanks. Sort of inconvenient, this. Yeah. Just happened? Nothing much, just a superficial wound. Wound? Yes. I was cleaning one of my guns. Oh, quite a house. Yes. Many servants? Maid, cook, and Haskins. Oh, the butler. Mm -hmm. Been with you long? He was with Mrs. Cortland's family for years. We inherited him with the house. Will you come this way, Sergeant? This is Mrs. Collins' bedroom. This the way you found it? Yes, I haven't touched a thing, Sergeant. I told the servants not to. She was here when you saw her last, eh? About, oh, about 10.30. I kissed her goodnight, and I went into my room. I see. Sergeant, I'm worried this time. This time? Yes. It happened once or twice before. I hardly think it's necessary. Look, Mr. Cortland, I know it's embarrassing. But your wife has disappeared. You've got to lay it on the line. All of it. Well, about six months ago... Mr. Cortland! Mr. Cortland! I beg your pardon, Mr. Cortland. Telephone for you. It's Mrs. Cortland. Mrs. Co Allison? Allison, darling, where are you? Hello? Hello, Dick. I'm in Boston. Boston? What happened? Are you all right? Yes. 
Yes, I'm all right now. Oh, Dick, it's been... Uh, listen, darling, never mind, as long as you're safe. Yes. Uh, Allison, where are you now? Uh, uh, just a minute. Sergeant, you can help me on this. She's at South Station. Could the Boston police... Sure, I'll have one of the boys up there meet her. Oh, thank you. Allison, stay right where you are, understand? Yeah, uh, someone will pick you up and take you to the plane. I'll wait at the information desk. Splendid. And, Allison, uh, will you hold on for just a minute, dear? Thank you. Excuse me, Sergeant. I, I want to... Uh, you understand. I'll take it in my room. Allison, my gun is missing. Darling, did you hear me? My gun. It's missing. Yes, Dick, I, I know. I have it. I have it with me. I'm terribly sorry, Sergeant, getting up at this unearthly hour. That's all right, Mr. Cortland. Happens all the time in the best of cities. Well, I'll be running along. And uh, take care of that arm of yours. What? Oh, yes. Thank you very much. Oh, you've been very kind. I'm really quite all right now, thank you. Oh, you, you mustn't let me keep you. Are you sure, honey? Because I wouldn't mind in the least. I really wouldn't. Oh, yes, I'm quite sure. Thank you again. Oh. Goodbye. Grace. <gasps> oh, Charles, you frightened me, dear. What name did you give her? The name you told me to, Charles. Tomlinson. Mrs. Clarabelle Tomlinson. That was right, wasn't it? That's quite right, yes. Just like you said. I did everything just like you said, Charles. <laughs> Are you proud of me, huh? Yes, I'm very proud, Grace. Excepting I don't what? understand why. Did you know she had a gun, Charles? Well, just got time to get to the train. You mean back to New York? Well, yes, of course, New York. Where else? Flight 38, leaving for New York and Washington. Now loading at gate 5. Flight 38, leaving for New York and Washington. Now loading at gate 5. Here's your ticket, Mrs. Gordon. Oh, thank you, Lieutenant. Well, there's really no reason for you to wait. Are you afraid I'll become a missing person again? Well, you know orders. Gate 5. Tell me, Lieutenant, do you often get cases like mine? We get all types. Some get lost, some are daffy, some hit the road to get out of a jam no one else knows anything about. Which type would you say I was? Oh, now, come on. You must have some sort of theory about me. I don't know. Some of the nicest people you ever took a gander at suddenly go daffy and make chop suey out of their best friends with a meat axe. Flight 38, New York and Washington, Gate 5. You think I'm Daffy? You? I'd say no. Off the record, mind you. I'd say you were an all there lady. Allison! Oh, Allie, what Marley. are you doing in Boston? Oh, I can't believe it. It's been ages. Oh, you look wonderful, darling. Allie, I want you to meet Bruce Alcott. Now, Bruce, stop there. This is Allison Cortland. I'm very pleased. Of to course you are. And, uh, this is Mr. Mitchum. Oh, how, how do you do? do? Mr. Mitchell's seeing me off. Ellie, why didn't you let me know you were in town? We could have had such a... Final call for flight 38. Oh, they're always so prompt, All aren't passengers, they? passengers, please board plane. Oh, well, the five. plane's still there. Bruce will take very good care of you on the trip, won't you, Bruce? Yes, I was planning to. Now, you be a good boy. He's desperately adventurous, Allie. Make him tell you. He's been in India for years, and now he's going back to... It is India, isn't it, Bruce? China. Oh, well, they're both over there. Allie, I make him down for the Van Sydens. Everybody's going. You'll be there, won't you? I think so. Are you coming down for it, Mr. Mitchell? Uh, no, I, I don't believe so. I know just how you feel. I loathe New York, too. But the Van Sydens are such special people. And a party's a party, isn't it? <laughs> Why don't you stay with me if you come down? Oh, I'd love to. Thank you, darling. Goodbye, Mr. Mitchell, and thank you. Not at all. Good luck. 
Oh. I'm going with you. Yes. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Call me when you're coming, Barbie. I'll meet yes. you with a couple of taxis. Yes. Yes, I will. And don't forget what I told you. So when uh, Barbie and I were... Gum. Gum. No. Magazine. Magazine. Perhaps coffee. No coffee, thanks. And so, as I was saying, when um, Barbie was six and I was nine, I had a treehouse in my backyard on Beacon Street. I wouldn't let Barbie play in my treehouse, and I think she's misjudged me ever since. <laughs> she thinks I'm sort of a permanent bachelor. Have, have you known her long? Oh, yes. We went to school together. Oh. Stonehaven. Stonehaven? Oh, yes, I know that school very well. You do? Sure. Don't you remember the boys who used to come to call in the carefully creased blue flannel suits, the clean white shirts and button-down collars? The polka dot ties. <laughs> yes. yes, we used to sit there in that parlor and try to hold hands with you girls without letting those hatchet-faced chaperones see us doing it. <laughs> oh, it was a wonderful place. I was very happy there. So was I. Well, let's not brood over the past. Shall we um, have uh, dinner before the theater or just a snack first and then a hot supper afterward? What? Tonight. I'm going to be in New York five days. Let's see, today's Wednesday. That gives us tonight, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I'm of course, afraid. you could have Friday to yourself. I could go to a ball game if I like baseball. <laughs> oh, that's good. No baseball. Now, about tonight, um, 21? Star? El Morocco? No? Good. We'll get off the beaten track some new place. Half past seven, long dress. Short dress? Oh, you really ought to wear something. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I'll wear a new dress if you'll come and have dinner with us. You can call us any time. We're in the book. Oh, fine. Richard Cortland. Who's that? Father? Uncle? No, don't tell me. Your husband? Well, didn't Barbie when she introduced No, you? no, just Allison Cortland, that's all she said. Well, I might have known you Stonehaven girls. There's always somebody. He's meeting you at LaGuardia, of course. Yes, well, I can see my future closing in on me. A bachelor in the bleachers. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Cortland, you're home. Oh, it's nice to see you, madam. Thank you, Helen. Mr. Cortland, Dr. Reinhardt returned your call. Fine. Dr. Reinhardt? Yes, darling. I saw him this morning. He's supposed to be a very fine psychiatrist. The best in the... Oh, Dick. Look, Allison, we can't pretend anymore. We have to do something. But a psychiatrist... I had to see him. I want you to let him help you, and I think he can. He even said he'd come here to the house. You don't understand. It's not as Allison, if I had... you know very well that psychiatry can help Oh, you. yes, I know, I know. I know a great many of our friends. But I'm not neurotic or maladjusted. Please, or, Allison. Or unbalanced. Dick, if you force me to accept the idea that I need a doctor, that I, that I can't work this out by myself, then it's not going to get better, don't you see? Oh. What's the matter? Nothing. You've been hurt. I said it was nothing. Why can't you tell me? Was it last night? I'll put it away. No, I want to know, Dick. Well, it all happened so quickly. I was awakened. I thought I heard someone in the hall. As I came out of my room, I saw you walking down the stairs. I called you, but you didn't answer. So I ran after you. You saw me coming and took the gun out of your purse. Then there was a shot. I don't remember much after that. I must have passed out. Oh, no. Oh, Allison, darling. It's nothing serious. It's only a surface wound. I might have killed you. And we'll work it out some way. Dick. Dr. Reinhardt. I want to see him. Are you 
important too. Why doesn't she answer the phone or shut the door? Daphne! Daphne! Oh, where is she? Oh, maybe she's in her room, Joe. Ah, in her room, as usual. She should be down here. Shouldn't leave the place unattended. Sickening. Expected everything myself. How can I get anywhere with people like this around me? Daphne! Daphne! Ah, there you are. Calm down, Four Eyes. Curing business hours. Why aren't you here in the studio? You can't hear the phone from upstairs? Look, I'm not your switchboard operator. Is that clear? But with no one here, what kind of a place will the customers think this is? What kind of a place is it, Four Eyes? It happens to be one of the oldest... Daphne, dear, we had the most interesting trip. The scenery was just lovely, just lovely. Really? Then there was this sick lady uh, on the way up, and Charles told me to help her, and I did, and Charles said I handled it very well. Isn't that nice, Daphne? Yes, Grace, that's nice. Where are the cigarettes? There they... Oh, no. There, there they are, there. In the box. Daphne, you shouldn't smoke so much. <coughs> Grace... Run along now, Grace. Let a good girl get a pack, will you? Yeah, sure. Well, you see, on the train everything went exactly according to my plan. Your plan? It's more like a five-year plan to me. You know, we've got to be very careful about every detail. Did she see you? Certainly not. Good, because tomorrow she's going to. Tomorrow? Oh, what? Twelve o'clock. It's all set. Perfect. I'm sorry, Doctor. Come in. I wasn't expecting you till one o'clock. Oh, no, Mrs. Scotland. Your husband made the appointment for this time. Oh, it's quite all right, Doctor. And then I started walking in my sleep about two months ago. Yes? But I've always been perfectly healthy and happy. In fact, almost monotonously so. Dr. Reinhardt, I'm sorry, but... Would you mind not doing that? <laughs> Silly of me. I'm usually not so... Go on. Well, on the train, I found that I'd taken... I had a gun. A gun? My husband keeps one, and I must have taken it. And? You shot someone. Yes, I shot him. Who knows what you may do the next time? Oh, Doctor, there won't be a next time. Mrs. Cortland, how can you be sure? But, Doctor... How can you be sure of anything? Light bother your eye? The light? No. It does. Why did you do that? 
told you, I, I told you the light didn't bother me. Mrs. Cortland, you're frightened. Do you know why you're frightened? Doctor... You're very nervous, aren't we? Dr. Mrs. Cortland, please try to control yourself. Well, aren't you going to tell me? I, I assure you, I'm quite capable of accepting. May I use your phone? Oh, yes. Yes, it's right over there. Is this Mr. Cortland's office? I wish to speak to him, please. This is Dr. Reinhardt. Ah, Mr. Cortland. I must see you right away. Oh, no, it won't wait. Yes, it's serious. Yes, it's very serious. And that's fine. Goodbye. office. Miss Miller, I want to speak to Mr. Cortland right away. But he must be there. Miss Miller, someone just talked to him. I heard him. Your husband left some time ago, Mrs. Cortland. How long ago? Oh, I should say at least half an hour. But that's impossible. No. No, thank you. This is certainly uh, crawling with Cortlands, isn't it? Pennington's. This is Allison's house. She was a Pennington. They're all Penningtons. You can always spot a Pennington by that, that open, frank look. They're also completely unsophisticated, like really sophisticated people are. Hey! Allison! Oh! What is it? Look. What's the matter? Look. Oh. Oh, it's Alice in the poor dog. Which is her bedroom? Uh, that one over there. Call her husband. Yes. I don't know his office number. I think Manhattan has a phone book. Oh, that's right. Like Boston. Uh-oh. Well, hello. You 
had a forced landing. The damage was negligible. You feel all right? How did you get here? Well, I was delivering Barbie and her equipment for the weekend. We found the front door open. Did you see anybody? No, why? A man in a dark suit with thick horn-rimmed glasses. No, I didn't see anyone. Well, if Mr. Cortland isn't there, give me the name of a doctor. I don't care what kind of a doctor. A doctor with a little black satchel. New York must have lots of doctors. You live here. I don't. Plaza 50036. Thank you. Hello, Barbie. Oh, Dick, you're here. That's wonderful. Allison is... Oh, hello. May I speak to the... Oh, what is his name? What's Allison's fainted. Bruce and I found her on the landing. She's upstairs, dear. Dr. Reimer, come here quickly, please. Doctor. Oh, hello. What is your name? Ferguson? Oh, Henderson. Well, never mind, Dr. Henderson. It's all right. Hmm? Well, why don't you just go back to what you were doing? Oh, Bruce. Bruce, how is she? Let's wait downstairs. What? Downstairs? Well, don't you think I ought to go in? Don't you think that perhaps I could do some good? Mrs. Cortland, that man you have mentioned, whoever he is, is gone. He can't harm you. There are just the three of us here. Your husband and I want to help you. But, Doctor, he talked to my husband on the phone. I heard him. It was just 12.30. I remember the clock striking. Hey, Allison, darling, I haven't talked to anybody all morning. And at 12.30, I was on my way over to pick up Dr. Reinhardt at his office. <laughs> but... Dick, he was here, I tell you. He was downstairs. He was terrifying. What is it? Don't you believe me? Of course we believe you, darling. Mrs. Cortland, there is no question here of believing or not believing. I think you'd better tell me all about this and about what went on before this. I'll bet you he's psychoanalyzing you. He's been up there almost a half an hour. He must be very thorough. I've heard of Reinhardt, good reputation. Tell me, Barbie, has, um, has Allison ever needed or ever uh, been to a psychiatrist before? Oh, gracious, no. All the Penningtons are desperately healthy. Real rocks of Gibraltar. I'll be right back, darling. What do you think, Doctor? I want to know exactly. Mr. Cortland, what... after such a brief interview, I can't tell precisely what your wife is suffering from. Physically, she she seems to be in perfect health. Yes, but mentally. Well, Mrs. Cortland has had a profound shock. And there is a certain amount of tension. Also, a fairly well-defined anxiety. Did you hear that? Of course, we must realize that her recent experiences, whether imagined or real, have been of a peculiarly varied nature. I must go and see him, too. Oh, uh, when you go back to see her, just let her talk. Reassure. I think that's what she needs most right now. Goodbye. Goodbye, Doctor. Elka, you've been very helpful. Sorry we met under such circumstances. I'm indebted to you both. We did what we could. We happened along. The door was open. What I can't understand is Haskin's absence. Especially since it's the mainstay of... Yes, it is Thursday, isn't it? I came because Allie asked me to stay, but of course I won't now under the circumstances. Well, I'm sure the Vincitums can find a room for you. If I'm not mistaken, they have 16 guest rooms? 17. Seven. Yes, that would be convenient, wouldn't it? I'd be right there. For the party? Yes. Oh, I do hope Allie will be well enough to come. I hope so. Well, I think I'd better... Of course, we'll find a way out. Thank you both again. Give Allie a great big kiss for me. Yes. Poor man. I adore him, too. Oh, Helen, hasn't Mr. Cortland come in yet? No, madam, not yet. Excuse me, Mrs. Cortland, but I just wanted to say that you look lovely. Oh, thank you, Helen. That's very sweet. It's Mr. Cortland. Good evening, Mr. Cortland. Hey, hello, Dick. darling. You'd better hurry. You know the Van Sydams. One cocktail and boom, right into dinner. Why, Allison, I had no idea you'd feel up to going out tonight. After all you've been through. But I had a good rest. You know, Dr. Reinhardt said diversions would be good for me. 
Don't I look all right? Oh, you look fine, dear. You see, I was so sure you wouldn't. I'm about to wind up that deal with Natwick. You know. Oh, it. yes, I know. The one you've been working on so long. Your dinner clothes are all laid out for you. I've simply got to see him tonight. He's right on the verge tonight? of... Tonight? It's very important to me, Allison. You know that. Look, would you mind terribly? Would it be all right if... If, if you dropped me off at the Van Sydams and then went along? Oh, no, Dick. No, not again. Honestly. But you know everybody there. Oh, Dick. All right. I'll try to come by after dinner. No. Now, you call up that old boar and put him off. It'll be a nice party, and we both need a little fun. I'll call him. But if he's in a bad humor, I'm afraid... Now, that... you talk to him. And you'll practically have to change like a fireman. Hello? Who? Well, hello there. Dick can't go to the Van Sydams. He had to rush off to a conference. You know, that housing plan. So we were wondering if maybe you could stop by here and take me along with you. Oh, I'd like to, but you see, I'm not going to Van Sydams. Oh, that's all right. I could come for you and drop you there. No, no, I just thought of something better. I've got a proposal to make. Very honorable. I, uh, I have a feeling you don't like those big, dull, dead parties any more than I do. Why don't you come with me? I'm going to a wedding. I think it'll be fun to slow off the beaten track. You see, it's my brother. <laughs> I didn't know you had a brother. Oh, yes, I've had him for years. How about it? All right, just keep right on thinking about it. I'll hold on this end of the line as long as you like. Mr. Elkett, madam. Oh. Hello. Hello. Long dress, I see. <laughs> oh. What's all this about your brother? Well, we run an airline together in China. We're going back there again on Monday. No, I, I mean the wedding. Oh, oh, well, it's just the usual conventional wedding. You know, people meet, fall in love, and call a clergyman. <laughs> Shall we go? <laughs> Hell, and I, I think I left my bag in the jungle there. The jungle? Yes. I can't call a conservatory a conservatory. No, no, of course you can't. <laughs> Mr. Cortland should call, Helen. We'll be back around... Around midnight, easily. Good night. Good night, Mrs. Cortland. Good night, sir. In evidence of your sincerity, do you accept this ring? I do. Then you, James, repeat after me. This ring I give thee. This ring I give thee. In token and pledge. In token and pledge. Of our constant faith and abiding love. Of our constant faith and abiding love. For inasmuch as Jean and James have solemnly pledged themselves to live together in the holy bond of matrimony, and have so declared themselves I now pronounce them husband and wife. Congratulations. Thanks, Bruce. Now, give me room, everybody. The best man's going to kiss the bride. No, 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 wait a minute. One more for my new sister-in-law. Oh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Lynn, Mrs. Cortland. I want to wish you all the happiness in the world. Thank you. I'm so honored to be here. Where did Ed Bruce brought you with him, Mrs. Cortland? Thank you. Uh, how do you like my brother? And Mrs. Cortland, my parents in China. You see, we were in the army there together. They took such a fancy to Bruce, they made him my honorary brother. Uh, now, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this place belongs to you all for this night. The refreshments are waiting for us in the next room, and the musicians are ready to play for our dance. There's plenty of ngape. Enough ngape to last until Tuesday. Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Ngape. That's what you're drinking. Oh, that! Isn't it delicious? And it, it has no effect at all, just a, a, a nice warming inside. Yes, that's what lots of people think when they begin to see twice as many wedding guests as it really are. Oh, Bruce, that's absurd. It is, uh... 
birthday. I'd love to. <laughs> Isn't it a lovely tree? Mm, no good. No good? No good for a tree house. <laughs> you still building tree houses? They're more practical than air castles. Any imported champagne? Yeah. Will you chill a bottle for me? Sure. Must have a girl out there in the car. Must have one? Girl. Really, it's not bad at all. And hardly anybody there. Our kind of place, hmm? What do you mean? Easy to get a table. and they're all called the Maples. Shall we sit over there? Will you uh, serve that to us now? Sure. Now, is that something or is that something? That's something, all right. Shall we dance? We've got an audience. Who's he? Oh, I don't know. Just some peeping Tom. His dancing days are over, so he just watches. I don't like it. Well, if you don't like it, why do we come here? Who picked this joint? I didn't. Daphne. Daphne. Goodbye, Junior. I'm sorry, Daphne. I'm... I'm a little jumpy. What's making you jumpy? Well... Dick, you got something to tell me? No. Something to give you. Oh, so that's it. Why, they're emeralds, Daphne. I thought they'd make you happy. You thought they'd make me patient, too, didn't you? The last time it was the fox scarf. That was a month ago. What does this mean? Another month? What we're trying to do is not an easy thing. It takes time, Daphne. Don't you understand? I understand everything. It's all set. The police, this, this Dr. Reinhardt and so forth. All set, isn't that right? That's right. And there's one thing I don't understand. Why wait? Well, everything must be very carefully worked out. And then eventually... Eventually? When is eventually? You're not waiting. You're stalling. Benet thinks so, and now I think so, too. way we have everything we've got a lot but we haven't everything i want what she's got i want all of it i want her house her name her man and i want them now tonight Uh, please. <laughs> What's that? I said my friend likes it. Well, what do you know? Now, I wish to propose another toast. This toast, we will drink to the different kinds of melon skins from which Ngape is made. Ngape! 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 
Bruce. Yes, ma'am. Could I propose a toast? Oh, certainly. Go right ahead. Speak out. Please. I'd like to propose a toast, too. Yeah. Here's to Jeannie and Jimmy, and to Jeannie's mother and father, and to this lovely wedding party, and the happiness it's brought all of us. And to all of you. And, and to all the melon skins. Ah. <laughs> Don't they? Ah. <laughs> oh, that was nice of you, Allison. Very well said. You want to know something? Mm -hmm. The human race. I think the human race is very fine. Very fine. Well, now, the human race, be glad to know that. It needs encouragement. I don't follow you. You know something? Mm -hmm. The human race is funny, too. It's fine, but it's funny. I don't follow you. Well, everybody's different. Everybody's fine, but different. Now, you take you and Dick. Same sort of family, same sort of school, same sort of friends. Entirely different. You follow me? Yes, I'm right with you. You see, some people say what they mean and they have a happy time. And other people get all tightened up inside. Can't talk. Can't even feel. They don't have a happy time. Well, people are very funny. You want to know something? I know something. <laughs> that was my question. Well, that was my answer. <laughs> oh, now, don't change the subject. What was it? Agape. Oh, really? What's your opinion? Of agape? Well, there's one good thing about it. Oh, no, no, there are lots of good things about it. Agape. It, it's, it's made of 15 different kinds of mild melon skins. And it wears and... off as quickly as it's swearing in. But who's swearing? <laughs> Oh, you want to know something? <laughs> something more? I... I think you're my very good friend. Bruce, you're my good, good friend. Let's shake hands. Hate to interrupt. But oh, yes, Jim. What is uh, Jeannie's changing now. We're going to make our break in a minute, best man. Fine. I'm driving Jimmy and Jeannie up to a little cabin. I have Sneed's Landing up Hudson. We'll drop you home on the way. Sneed's Landing? Oh, that's a sweet little town. We'll meet you in the car. Yeah, fine. Good night. Good night. <laughs> oh, don't stop, kids. Don't ever stop. No, no. No, please get out. You're much too polite. Tina, you're going to be very happy. Oh, yes. And as for you, you're a very lucky man. Yes. Here's my bag. Oh, hello. Yes, remember me? <laughs> no more interruptions now. I, I won't keep Bruce a minute. Oh, I'm so glad I didn't go to the van slide You like the wedding? Oh, yes. Jimmy and Jeannie are... Aren't they sweet? I like the way you are. Hmm? With people, I mean. I love people. I'm devoted to dogs, too. I just adore dogs. Celiums, especially. <laughs> oh, there's my key. Oh, efficient, too. And Butterfinger. Well... It's long about here. I heard it. Mm -hmm. I have very sharp ears. <laughs> I'm also devoted to cats. <laughs> the Persian, especially. I, I had a six-toed Persian once. You had a key once, too. In Nantucket. In Nantucket. I better get a flashlight. <laughs> Don't you two ever come up for air? <laughs> it just disappeared. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll find it. We'll... Here, um... <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> now, could you, uh... Could you move your foot? Yeah. No, the, the, the other foot. Oh. 
Yeah, no, no, Allison. Allison. Hmm? Would you uh, mind lifting your dress? What? In a very ladylike way, I mean. Oh, sure. A genius! <laughs> oh. I better get it. <sighs> Even like the way you are with keys. Allison. Here. That's the girl. <laughs> oh, it's been wonderful. Really wonderful. That's true, Allison. Wonderful. <laughs> You think we're a little trite? I don't mind. Oh, the kids. Good night. Good night. Uh, the day after tomorrow. Day after tomorrow? The, my, my cocktail party. Oh, yes, yes. You won't forget. I won't forget. Good night. Night. Good night. Behind the chair. You see, I must have dropped my bag when I saw him. Allison. Oh, Dick. What's the matter? Dick, that man, the one who said he was Dr. Reinhardt, he was here a moment ago. Maybe he's in the jungle. Allison, darling. I just came home. We'd been to a wedding, and I came in, started upstairs when the light went on in Is here. Something wrong, thought... sir. Oh, Haskins. Uh, check all the windows here and everywhere else on this floor. Yes, sir. And close that door. Dick, he couldn't have gone out the front door. I'd have seen him. Any sign of him back there, Alfred? No, nothing here. Did you go outside? Darling, I wish you hadn't stayed out so late. You're exhausted. But it's all my fault, Cordell, and I persuaded her against her will to help me launch a Chinese wedding. No, it's quite all right. Only, it may have been too much of a strain for her. Oh, don't be absurd, Dick. I'm excited only because I saw that man here when I came home. Just where he was yesterday morning, behind that chair. Allison, darling, we've been all over that. The windows are locked? Yes, sir. But that's impossible. How could he have got out of the house if everything's locked? Listen to me very carefully, Allison. Nobody was here. Not yesterday, not tonight. Nobody could have gone out that front door because you yourself would have seen him. Nobody could have gone upstairs. I would have seen him. <sighs> Haskins. Oh, sorry, Bruce. Just wanted to remind you we're... I'll be right with you, Jim. Okay, we'll wait outside. Shall I bring Mrs. Cortland's chocolate now, sir? Yes, please. Elkin, are you quite sure you saw nobody leave the house just now? I was right outside. I couldn't have helped seeing anybody. Is there anything I can do, sir? Thanks, nothing. Sorry you were disturbed. Elkin, I must confess I don't know what to do. At times, she seems completely, well, rational. And then these sudden, frightening scenes. Hallucinations. I am... It is puzzling, all right. She seems so happy tonight, the whole evening. Oh, here, I'll, uh, I'll take that. Thanks, Helen. I hope Mrs. Cortland will have a good night, sir. Yes. Well, I'll, uh, I'll show you. No, no, you go on. Good night. Good night.
think of everything. Don't wear those glasses anymore. Ever. Silence in bed. And I'm all ready. darling. Honeymoon, remember? Love nest at Sneedon's Landing. Yeah, I know, kids. It's awful. But I'll buy you the best bridal suite in New York. I have to get back to him. Back where? Sutton Place. Sutton Place.
We found her, sir. Just now. Is Mr. Cortland? Her husband is with her. Elkin, what are you? Allison, I saw her on the balcony. You saw? Is she? How do you happen to? On the reading, as if she might jump. I flashed the light in her face. Then you? Then you saved her from. Elkin, I. I really don't know how to thank you. Oh, what is she? She's uh, she's sleeping now. We'd better go downstairs. She. Uh... She must have fallen back from. You say she was on the railing? And was about to jump. Haskins, if Mrs. Cotton doesn't remember what just happened, don't say anything about it. I understand, sir. And have Helen make up the couch in Mrs. Cotton's room. I'll stay there the rest of the night. Yes, sir. I'll tell her. Look, Cotton, I'm sure I'm butting in here, and yet butting I. Butting in? Why, good heavens, don't you realize if you hadn't come along, Allison might. Well, it's fortunate that you. Incidentally, what did bring you back? I, uh, I came back here tonight because... Look, uh, why don't you sit down? Oh, here? yes. Oh, can I have one of your cigarettes? I'm terribly oh, sorry. Thank here, you. I have a light. Thank you. I, um... I came back here tonight, well, deliberately, in fact, because these Chinese kids who were sitting in my car said they saw somebody on the street out there. What did he look like? They didn't see him very clearly. Naturally, I thought it might be the fellow that Alice... Impossible. I suppose so. And yet I can't believe it's all hallucination on Allison's part. And this man that the kids saw... Must have been someone from the Parkers. The Parker? Yes, the people across the street, they're always giving parties. Must have been one of their guests on his way home. Walking? Or probably a guest who lives nearby. That's right, some neighbor. No, Alcott, I've been all through this with the police and her doctor. Look, the other afternoon, an imaginary psychiatrist giving her a fantastic examination. Tonight, after you brought her home, he was in the living room trying to frighten her. Just now, we found her on the balcony unconscious. You saw her yourself. Yeah. She'd walk in her sleep. That's how she got to Boston in a complete trance. I don't know what to do, Elkett. Allison is a very sick woman. And I wanted to help. Better mind my own business, I guess. Hmm? You've done more than help. I'll never forget that. Anyway, Allison won't be left alone again. I'll see to that. Good night, Portland. Good night, Elkett. Dear. Good morning, darling. You're up early. Did you sleep well? No, not too well. I had an awful dream. I dreamt I was... Dick, why was the couch made up in my room? Why... I was concerned about you last night, darling. I slept there. Oh, darling, you must have been so uncomfortable. No, it wasn't bad at all. And it kept me from worrying about you. The dream, very bad, Allison. I was running away. Climbing over something high. I can't remember much of it. Maybe that's just as well. I think it was that man. The one with the glasses. He was after me. Yes. Good morning. Good morning, Helen. I'll take that. Thank you. Dick. I have such a splitting headache. Did you put anything in my chocolate last night? Yes. Yes, I did. But why? Why didn't you tell me? Dr. Reinhardt told me to give you a sedative whenever you have one of those attacks. Attacks? I hated to do it, Allison. What are you talking about? I didn't have an attack. I do not have attacks. I saw that man standing in the living room. Oh, I've had enough of all this. I'm going to the police about it. Allison! The police? To have them find him and arrest him. Find out why he's persecuting me and make him stop. Darling. Won't doing a thing like that make us look a little ridiculous? Well, which seems to you the least desirable? Looking ridiculous to the police or my being driven out of my mind? There is no need for you... There is I need! I was going to say there is no need for you to snap at me. 
I'm sorry. Dick, sometimes I feel that nothing I do really affects you deeply. Why, Allison. I insist the police find this man and arrest him. All right. Since you feel the way you do, I think we should go to the police. Can I just swear out a warrant or something? Mrs. Cortland, we want to help you as much as possible. But surely you realize we can't go out and pick up every man in Sutton Place who happens to be wearing horn rim glasses? But the I... mayor wouldn't like it. He wouldn't like it at all. I'm not asking you to pick up a lot of men, just this one. But... I want him arrested. It seems simple enough to me. Isn't there some kind of warrant? Well, you could swear out a John Doe warrant, I guess. But if I were you, I'd think this over a she little... She doesn't need to. I believe her if you don't, and this man ought to be arrested. I'll swear out the warrant myself. Thank you, Dick. Look, darling, why don't you run along? I'll attend to it and take a cab onto the office. All right, I'll see you later. Thank you, Sergeant. Not at all, Mrs. Cortland. I'm sorry, Strake, I couldn't let her down. She'll feel better now. You want to sign a warrant? What's the use? No use. How's your arm? Hmm? Oh, it's fine. Fine. Well, thanks again, Strait. All in a day's work. Is this the house? Yeah, the one with the canopy. Looks like the Parkers are sleeping off a hangover from their party last night. Well, I'll wake them up. You? Great. So glad. Thanks. Is uh, Mrs. Parkhurst at home? No. No? She did. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. But Miss Parkhurst, she been dead for five years, so it ain't as bad as it might be. Hmm. Is uh, Mr. Parkhurst around? He around, but he ain't around here. Well, I'm from the Times. I was wondering if... No funny be... paper in the Times, is it? No. I was wondering if... Too the... bad, no funny paper. Yes, well, we're concerned about it, too. But what I wanted to ask has to do with the society section of the Times. Did uh, Mr. Parkhurst have some guests in late last night? We wanted to write... I don't know. Stuff. You don't know? I ain't heard. Mr. Parkhurst, he in Florida, and he only writes once a month, and he only say $95 and no 100s. He been in Florida long? Hmm, about six, seven months. Well, I guess the uh, Times is all mixed up. Well, thanks a lot. <laughs> I'll get a funny paper inside that Times. Yes. Well, I'll speak to the managing editor about it. Well, thanks. Thanks again. Bye. You're welcome. Bye. Find out anything? Yeah. He made up all that about the Parkers and their parties. Look, I'd better go see Mrs. Cortland. Now? I won't be long. Well, just so you let me get back to that hotel. I promise. Why don't you run around there now and come for Jeannie for a few minutes? <laughs> Jeannie doesn't come for that fast. I see what you mean. I'll be back. How do you do, sir? I'd like to see Mrs. Corbin for a moment, Haskins. How is she this morning? Quite well. She's in the conservatory. Well, thanks. I'll just go on in. Hiya, Bruce. Well, slaving away over a hot jungle, I see. <laughs> I'm sorry about last night. It was a dismal ending, such a wonderful evening. Hope you got some rest. Oh, I did. Only... Only what? Nothing. Well, that's a fascinating story. You should write down reminiscences like that for posterity. Oh, you and your wit and humor. Come on, what were you going to tell me? Well, I was going to say it. Oh, just that I had an awful dream. I can't imagine anything less interesting than that, can you? According to what kind of a dream it was. I uh, take it you dreamt about the horn-rimmed character. It's going to be all right now. We told the police about him. There's a very efficient Sergeant Strake at the 17th Precinct. He's going to try to find him and arrest him. Good. How are the honeymooners? Honeymooning. Would you mind my being impertinent and nosy for a minute longer? Yes, but that won't stop you. Allison, do something for me. For a friend. Don't take anything to drink in the evening for a while. Was I that bad at the wedding? You know what I mean. I mean, uh, hot chocolate. What do you know about that? Only that I saw your husband taking some up to you. 
Bruce. You're my friend, but I think you're way out of line. Hmm. Good place for a treehouse. Look, Allison. During the night, you walked onto the balcony and you very nearly jumped off. Now, that's what you did, not what you dreamt. This is a shock, and I intend it to be a shock. How could you possibly... I know because I saw you. I was standing right out here. And that completes my statement for today. Talked at Miss Court. Just leave it there, Helen. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Well, I guess I'm about ready for bed. Quite a day tomorrow, I guess, with our cocktail party. Dick. Yes. You know, I feel so much better since we saw Sergeant Strake today. Well, the warrant is all signed up, and the New York Police Department's officially on the lookout for that fellow. Oh, it's so strange. I, I wonder who, why. Yes, it's very strange. But I was thinking this afternoon, your father had a lot of enemies. Father? Any man does, who is both powerful and wealthy as he was. It might be some crank who imagined himself wronged by your father. Like that crackpot who tried to kill Harry Gibbs. Kill? A nut. A crank. But he didn't get very far. They got him first. Your chocolate's getting cold, darling. I don't think I want any tonight, Dick. Allison? Yes? There's nothing in it tonight down the hatch like a good girl. I, I really don't want it, Dick. You're not afraid to drink this, are you, Allison? Yes? Oh, hello, Bruce. Yes, I'm fine. No, of course I didn't. Y yes, Bruce. Yes, it is rather late. Goodbye. Well, maybe that'll help me sleep. I could use some, come to think of it. Oh, darling. Oh, I'm so... I know. <gasps> I know. Don't ever suspect me again. No. Good night, my dear. Yes, I'm going to fill your cigarette box. Mr. Never Martin. mind, never mind. It'll take only a moment. I sir. have some cigarettes in my desk. Just let it go in the morning. Good night. What time would you like me to call you in the morning, sir? The usual time. And breakfast. Good night, Haskins. Good night, sir. Mr. What's going Carbon on? Carbon tetrachloride's all molded below the minimum absorption index. But uh, what is that? Oh, put it back.
North Atlantic Fire Insurance, semi-annual inspection. Mr. May I take... Volatility, minus 43. Minus 43. Look, mister, I got no responsibility... Well, somebody must have. I'll see about that later. Right now, I gotta check hemostat control sprinklers on 28. 28, up, you got the pass keys. 28, oh, sure. Look, mister, I only came on this job day before I yesterday. I think you have a great future, son. Great. This way. We'll look in a minute. Get that. Take her on down. that all the minimum had been the something and the uh, the tetra something was uh, molded. All right. All right. molded. It's a semi-annual inspection. Now, listen, I want... Shh. He's probably in here now checking on the, the sprinklers. And I sure hope that they're all right because down there the something was 43. What? Minus 43. Hmm. Mr. Inspector, this is Mr. Hannigan, our night superintendent. Hmm. Three out of four thermostats hopelessly clogged. And the mess in this office. Papers piled on the desk. Look at that wastebasket. Don't you think Fire this hazard. Is... Are all the officers in this building like this? Well, look, mister, I got no response. So you're the night want... superintendent. Well, right. don't come to me. He'll get the official report on Monday. Now, look, I... And you better clean up this mess now. Well, but wait don't a Don't try to bribe me. Good boy you got here. Good night. Anything? Hardly anything. Port account of an officer, I don't think he does much there. No evidence of a legitimate business of any kind. No evidence of anything else either. I um, took this unpaid bill from Timney's address to court on an emerald bracelet, 12500 What did I say? I have the average, intelligent, well educated man's opinion Hello, about such things. Hello, Bruce. Hello. Hey, you look happy. I am happy. What would you like? It's more of the hostess. <laughs> Excuse me, John. <laughs> so you wore pearls the other night. You like pearls, don't you? Well, don't you? Well, as a matter of fact, I sort of hate to think of all those itchy oysters going to all that trouble. Oh, stop. I'll never be able to look them in the eye again. <laughs> now, you take emeralds. Oh, thank emeralds? you. Emeralds? Yes. What's the matter? You think I need a little color? No. Mr. Courtney? Uh, no, thank uh, you. Dick, as I was saying just a moment ago, I have the average, intelligent, well-educated man. Excuse point me, I must view. see about something. <laughs> now, an emerald bracelet What's on that wrist. Oh, big discussion. Bruce has a weakness for emeralds. Hey, Allie, yes. you've got to come with me and look at the mining engineer I've just found. Oh, he's lovely, and he's from Peru. And you know how crazy I always have been about Peru. Yes, Allie, But he I'll seems go. a bit grouchy, and so no. I want you to come and see well. She hasn't the slightest idea where Peru is. Well, Try your luck? Or, um, is it skill? Both. Funny what you said about Allison and emeralds. Oh, yes, well, emeralds would suit her. Yes, but she's always thought they wouldn't. Really? Your turn. I'm glad you think so, though, because... Well, I, uh, I just bought her some. Oh? I'm gonna surprise her with them on Wednesday. Nice shot. Our anniversary. An emerald bracelet. Bullseye. I may take up Parcheesi. Oh, you're not leaving. Allison, all afternoon I've been trying to tell you something. The same as I told you yesterday. Bruce, please. You've got to understand. Elkert, leaving so soon? Oh, yes, I've got a lot of packing to do. Oh, yes, you're leaving tomorrow, aren't yes. you? Yes. When will you be back? Not for a year, at least. We'll miss you. Thanks. Well, it's been a wonderful party. It's been swell knowing you both. Mr. Cortland, telephone a message from your office. Excuse me, please. 
Bruce, you must let us hear from you. You will, won't you? Yes. Take care of yourself, Alice. Goodbye. Bye. Now we can start packing. That's what he thinks. Huh? What do you mean by that? Patience, my brother. Patience. as I got your message. I gave you the hurry call because I wanted to see you in a hurry. Well, I'm here. Come on down. Why? It's good up here. We almost feel out of this filthy hole. My coming here to see you isn't very smart. I've been smart. But I'm sick of sitting in this two-bit rat trap while she throws cocktail parties. This doesn't sound like my girl. Your girl is a lot of girls. This is one of them. Come on down. I wouldn't take your glasses. Oh, company. Charles, we have company. How do you do? Grace, why don't you go to the yes, kitchen Charles, and... Yes, uh, Charles, I'll make some tea. Yeah, some tea. Uh, Charles, you think I should fix some cinnamon toast, Cinnamon too? toast, too, yes. Isn't that nice? Daphne has a young man. Uh, yes, Daphne, much. I enjoyed the movie so much, but Charles, he couldn't see a thing, not a thing. I told him he ought to wear his well, glasses, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't. Are you out of your minds? What are you doing here? Calm down, poor eyes. I expected nothing from you. Really? Mr. Nothing. Mr. Cortland, I thought I could depend on you to be careful, but you go to roadhouses where you might be seen. You come here where you must know that it's dangerous. Look. Hmm? You want out of this? What? What do you mean? Uh, out of what? We could settle with you right now for a small, flat sum. Couldn't we, Dick? You mean you want to be rid of me, eh? Listen. I'm in this to the end. Charles, dear, the oven again. It does pop and roar so. Charles always lights it for me. And cinnamon toast so much better made in the oven, don't you think? Tea's almost ready. Daphne, dear, is your young man in business? Yes, yes. He's in a very delicate business. But unfortunately, like many young men, he wants to run it all by himself. And through his own foolishness, he may lose the chance to make a fortune. My, my, such uncertain times. Come, Charles, we'll have our tea in the kitchen. Oh, Come on, and then when it's ready, oh, it's... well, bring some in here to the young people. Right. You can see it all. All of it. Mr. Four Eyes is going to have the guest room in our house. Cozy, family style, forever. Listen, Daphne. And little Mrs. Four Eyes, she can have the attic and just come down for my dinner parties on Sutton Place. It isn't going to be that way. Mr. Vernet is not going to live in our house, family style. Not in our house, darling. Ask him to come to Sutton Place tonight. In an hour. In an hour. Yes. Tell him. Just tell him I'll need his help. Yes, Dick.
Just what now? A man wearing horn rim glasses now, I hope. Wait in the car. Oh, I'm sorry. The uh, sign said 24-hour service, so I came on in. What are you selling? Selling? Oh, I'm not. I, I need a passport photo in a hurry. Going away? Yeah. Pretty late for photography. You're right. I need it as soon as I can get it. I'll call a photographer for you. He's in the back. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm afraid he doesn't have much time tonight. Oh, that's all right. You can take it yourself if you want to. It's okay with me. I'm no photographer. You certainly don't look like one. It's the other way around. You should, um... Should what? Pose. Like that. With your, uh, bracelet. Oh. You like it? It's new. I haven't even been out with it yet. I wish it weren't rushing off tomorrow. Maybe you'd let me, uh, take it out. With you. I'll call the photographer. I hope I haven't said anything that's... You haven't. Brené? Mr. Brené? You got a customer. One passport photo. He's in a hurry. Hello. Passport photo? Uh, yes. I'm in a hurry. 24-hour service we say and what we say we do. You can have a print tonight, say, in 15 minutes. Well, thanks. Uh, sit over there. Oh, yes. Uh, of course, a slight extra charge at this hour. Okay. Say, uh, who's the uh, girl? Well, she models for me in the... You wish a passport for her, eh? Yes. All right. Look into the camera, please. One moment. Good, good. Ready? Thank you very much. I think that's going to be all right. This will take a few minutes. Make yourself comfortable. Oh, thanks. Take a look through these. The glasses. Now, let's go to strength. Tell him all we know. Cortland's got a girl. She's got the bracelet. This one, from Tiffany's. Here's the clincher. I know why Allison walks in her sleep. It's a book up there titled The Use of Drugs in Hypnosis. I found it in a drawer with the glasses. What is it? I know I left my glasses in this drawer. That, that fellow must have taken them. Don't be stupid. You're always losing them. Why should he take my glasses? Why didn't he wait for his pictures? Oh, Wait a minute, he must be connected. I got it all? Yeah. Tell Strake to pick up the two of them here. And you? Sutton Place, I'll be there. Now hurry. Got them. I put them down somewhere. I was sure he'd taken them. I'm losing your nerve, imagining. What do you mean, imagining? Shut things, up. But... Get on over there, Dick's waiting for you. What are you going to do? Coming. Yes. Oh, Haskins, what is it? I just wanted to say good night, sir. Good night. 
We're both very grateful for Mrs. Scotland's permission to take off until tomorrow night. And also to you, sir. Have a good time. Thank you, sir. A most satisfactory employer, Mr. Cortland. And Mrs. Cortland. She seems quite well again. Good night. Good night. Hello, darling. I hoped you'd still be awake. I sort of wanted to celebrate. Celebrate? What? That Natwick deal. It's all closed. Plans approved and everything. Oh, Dick, that's wonderful. That makes up for my having had dinner alone tonight. That won't happen again. I've forgiven you. Well, here's to a very understanding wife. It was a good party, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Barbie is so funny. Did, did you see her mining engineer? The, the one from Peru? <laughs> Wait till I tell you about him. He's waiting downstairs. He's come again to kill you. The door. To the door. You'll never be free while he lives. He'll always come back. He tried to make you kill me. on the table. Take the gun. Downstairs. He's downstairs.
Operator, give me the police. Yes, I, I want to report a, a murder. Hang up that phone. I thought... Think fast, Mr. Cortland. I finished thinking. Your wife kills me, you think. The police think so, too, right? She goes away for life. A criminally insane woman who's already tried to shoot her husband finally shoots and kills me. Isn't that what you were thinking, Mr. Cortland? No, Vernet. Listen. You listen and don't move. Mrs. Cortland, I'm afraid you'll have to listen, too. Mr. Cortland and Daphne, she was to be your successor. Were to get all your money, I was to get none. Vernet, I... I, I, didn't, I didn't want her to kill you. I, I planned to. You planned. My plan would have worked. Your plan's a mess. But it's a mess I'll get out of. <laughs> Just killed your husband, Mrs. Cortland. And now you're going to kill yourself. <laughs> house forever. <laughs> 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 